Welcome to this new show me. In this one we're going to be talking about the hypothalamus again and with particular reference really just to marking out the boundaries of the hypothalamus. I often think that it is a structure that doesn't have clear boundaries and that can often make it difficult to learn but it's such an important neurological structure we do need, do need to know exactly where it is. So to begin with we're just going to mark out some structures here just for orientation which I hope you know already. Here we have the corpus callosum, so I'm hoping you know about that. In here we have the cerebellum. I'm really hoping you know about that. Here we have the uh, cerebral, if my pen will write, cortex. If you don't know about that, then um, you need to see me after class, quite frankly. Um, other structures here are this structure, which is the choroid plexus. This is a fleshy kind of structure on models, which is really showing the floor of the lateral ventricle and where CSF is produced. This structure in here is the septum pellucidum and is a thin membrane separating the space between the left and the right lateral ventricles. Down here we have the pituitary gland. That's going to be important for today because we're talking about the hypothalamus. Other structures that we must include would be the midbrain up here, um, the pons in here, and the medulla oblongata, which of course are all belong to the brain stem. And right back here, we'll just, we've got the pineal gland in there, and this structure in here is the fornix, it's coming from the hippocampus. So. I think that's all we need to label for now just to get uh, our bearings with this. We're going to clear those uh, annotations away and now what I'm going to do is try and mark out the boundaries of the hypothalamus. So remember that the hypothalamus is part of the diencephalon. Diencephalon means between brain, it means between the cerebrum and the midbrain and it includes two major structures that I think medical students should know about. One is the thalamus and the other is the hypothalamus and hypo just means below the thalamus. It's slightly more ventral as well as we'll see when we mark it out. But we're going to start by marking on um, its boundaries and first of all we're going to go with its most rostral boundary which is the most anterior boundary. And We're going to start by just highlighting a structure in here I'm circling in red here and that is called the anterior commissia. Now you may or may not have heard of that before but basically it's just an extension of the corpus callosum is involved in the same function as the corpus callosum which is sharing information between hemispheres. The only difference really is that it's predominantly involved in sharing information between the left and right prefrontal cortex so it tends not to be involved in, uh, in general sharing of information. That's the anterior commissure. The other structure I want to highlight, which will be known to you, is this structure down here, which is the optic chiasm. And if we draw a line between those two, we've marked out that anterior border or the rostral boundary. So that goes from the anterior commissure to the optic chiasm. Now from the optic chiasm, I'm going to change colour here. And now we're going to draw on the inferior border. And the inferior border is really this structure in here which is the infundibulum the continuation of the infundibulum to this small part of the hypothalamus which just runs in here up to the mammary bodies I'm going to try and get that on I think I've done that there that's okay and then around the mammary bodies in here and we're just going to stop there so this structure in here is the infundibulum otherwise known as the pituitary stalk of course I said earlier that this is the pituitary gland And this structure in here, which you've heard of before, are the mammary bodies. Look at MB for that. This structure in between the two, I'm going to write out in full because it will be new to you. So the structure between the infundibulum or pituitary stalk and the mammary bodies is a structure known as the median So the structure in between the infundibulum 
and the mammary bodies as the median eminence. And altogether, those three things, the infundibulum, median eminence, and the mammary bodies, create the inferior boundary of the hypothalamus. Now, up where we were with the mammary bodies, which is around here, is the most posterior point really of the hypothalamus and in order to put on its superior boundary we need to follow a groove that separates the thalamus from the hypothalamus and this groove is called the hypothalamic groove and it's a groove that allows the flow of CSF to come through the intraventricular foramen which is roughly in this position in here I'm just going to draw a circle around it there it allows the flow of CSF to travel down here and you can see this groove as I draw it in green and the flow of CSF comes through the interventricular foramen into the third ventricle and down into the cerebral aqueduct which is that the most superior portion of the midbrain and this green line which marks out the hypothalamic sulcus is a contribution to the superior boundary which really completes and if we just draw a short line just there from the anterior commissure to the hypothalamic sulcus there's not really much to go in order just to complete that um, area there so if we take the most posterior part of the mammary bodies and just draw a line up there connecting it draw a line up here connecting it to the hypothalamic sulcus that's really marking out the extent of the hypothalamus so if we color that in you can see that all the area that I'm now coloring in in gray is all hypothalamus and the hypothalamus includes some of the structure, structures we've mentioned but not all of them so it doesn't include the anterior commissure or the optic chiasm it does include the infundibulum it does include the median eminence and it does include the mammary bodies uh, and the rest of that gray area really is a selection of nuclei that have specific functions and some that have more broad functions but we can certainly see the grey there and the grey marks out the hypothalamus and we can say that really the hypothalamus is such a small area it's about four centimetres cubed in brain space which is very very small but it's overall influence on body function it's overall influence on uh, endocrine function and autonomics and limbic structures it's, is a lot so it's a small area of brain that has a very important set of functions let's just finish by marking on in contrast the area of the thalamus just to separate it so this structure in here is what we call the thalamic adhesion which is where the two thalami join together and so all this area above this green line all this area in here between this green line which is the hypothalamic sulcus and the choroid plexus above all of this so that's uh, interthalamic adhesion all of this in here is going to be the thalamus and really what we've drawn out now is the major area of the diencephalon which involves the thalamus and the hypothalamus okay there we go subscribe to Sultan Brain Hub for more videos to help explain the mysteries of the brain